So I'm going to be speaking today a little bit about primary spine tumors in, in general first, and then kind of using a specific case to kind of highlight some of the issues involved with that. And so I think most of us here in the room are clinicians, and so we try, try, try to think clinically, and so we'll focus on a specific patient as a 19-year-old woman who presented uh, at an outside facility with two years of progressive uh, back pain. You can see on the x-ray she has this lesion here, which eventually leads to her getting a CT scan, and then shortly after that, she gets a MRI uh, of her thoracic spine. And you see this mixed lytic and blastic lesion arising from uh, the rib uh, pedicle junction with enhancement on MRI. Um, and so for the most part, when you're thinking about something that looks like a tumor in the spine, um, you're thinking about metastatic disease or metastatic disease or metastatic disease. Um, but uh, there are certainly a host of primary tumors uh, that can affect the bone um, and, as such, the spine. Um, and especially in a young patient and with imaging findings like this, really you're thinking more of a primary bone tumor. Um, and so really distinguishing between the benign, um, aggressive, and malignant types of tumors is really one of the first keys in having a high index of suspicion and planning biopsy so you know exactly what you're dealing with. And so I'm um, just going to run down some of the pathology we're kind of thinking about in sort of a checklist as you move through it. And starting with the benign, you have lesions like an osteochondroma, which can certainly look like this, um, but they typically stop growing at skeletal maturity um, and usually do not, um, uh, they're not symptomatic unless they grow to a point where they cause um, neural impingement. Uh, hemangiomas are the most typical, or the most common types of tumors that we see, primary tumors we see in the spine, but certainly not what we're dealing with in a case such as this. Um, you have eosinophil eosinophilic granulomas, which can sometimes be um, a form of multi-organ disease, in, such as in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, but can be treated either with observation or chemotherapies. Aneurysmal bone cysts, um, which are actually not neoplastic, but have a very characteristic um, uh, appearance on MRI and CT with the soap bubble, uh, lytic sort of multilobulated lesions, and uh, areas of hemorrhage within um, the lesion that you can see. Uh, these tend to be very bloody, and so if you are going to, if you have a suspicion for it and you're going to biopsy it, you need to be aware of that. Uh, then osteoid osteomas and osteoblastomas, which are distinguished based on their size, with osteoblastomas having a risk for progression and malignant transfers, transformation, and so are typically resected. Uh, then chondromas and enchondromas, um, which are tumors that originate from the hyaline cartilage or from the medullary cavity. Um, finally, you are, the next kind of step of tumors uh, are your locally aggressive benign tumors, and these are your giant cell tumors, which require, from a surgical planning standpoint, once you know what you're dealing with, a wide surgical excision. These can be curative with surgery alone, uh, although in some cases, um, uh, adjuvant radiation therapy um, can be used, and these can also uh, uh, trans have malignant transformation in up to 10% of cases. And then um, chordomas, which we're going to have a, a very interesting talk later in this conference about uh, as well, um, with the locally aggressive benign, though these tumors can metastasize. And then what you're really worried about when you see a primary bone tumor are the malignant primary spine tumors. Uh, in general, they have very poor prognoses. They often present in young patients, and having knowing what you're dealing with early in the, in the decision process and focusing your treatment with a good team is really the key to getting good outcomes from these types of tumors. So osteosarcoma is the most common primary bone malignancy, uh, typically or most commonly presents in the fourth decade of life, but has a pretty kind of um, standard uh, uh, area of presentation. Um, the CT shows osteoblastic and osteolytic type lesions. It can be both um, or either or, as we can see in these two representative examples. MRIs show gadolinium enhancement, and these are aggressive tumors, um, and when they present um, in the spine, the life expectancy is, is rather low. Um, from population-based studies looking at this, 
Uh, in the 1970s, the uh, life expectancy after diagnosis was only a year. Um, this has improved with improvements in, in um, treatments, but really, even in the 2000s on a population basis, the life expectancy is two year. Now, individual studies are showing much longer survivals than this at um, highly specialized centers. Treatment typically um, involves neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by an in block resection. Chondrosarcoma, these are a little bit more indolent. They're primary malignant tumors uh, arising from the cartilaginous elements. Um, and they have a five year survival that's certainly better because they're slower growing. Nearly 70% of patients will survive to five years. They don't really respond well to either chemotherapy or radiation therapy because they tend to be relatively slow growing. And in block surgical resection, when possible, is the, is the treatment of choice. Um, and then you have Ewing sarcoma, which is a, a peanut, a little blue cell tumor. Um, these typically present in younger patients in the first three decades of life. Um, you do see them much less often in, old, in an older patient population. They're usually in the sacrum, but they can certainly affect the mobile spine. And when they do, it's usually in the posterior elements of the thoracic spine. Um, and the treatment paradigm for these is usually biopsy, so you know what you're actually dealing with, then neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Following chemotherapy, the best available data says that if you can get an, a complete and block resection, local control and long-term survivals are Pro local control is certainly better, long-term survival is probably better, um, but then radiotherapy is the key to these um, tumors as well. Certainly studies showing that just debulking the tumor after chemotherapy probably isn't any better than just treating it with, radiothera ra uh, with radiotherapy if you can't get an in block resection. So in this case um, that we were dealing with, I think the first key point is trying to figure out exactly what we're dealing with. And so in order to, um, to figure out what you're dealing with, a biopsy is really the, the key to that, and planning the biopsy appropriately. Really, once you have a, a concern for a malignant neoplasm of the bone, uh, probably referral to a center where you can have a multidisciplinary team that can help plan the biopsy in all stages of the treatment early is probably what's in the best interest. This patient ended up getting a CT-guided biopsy. Certainly concerns with core needle biopsies. Um, in this case, the, the pathology came back as a giant cell tumor, even though the imaging characteristics were not typical for that. And there's a concern probably for a sampling um, error. If you can see here, the track of the biopsy um, may not have given you know, the best um, pathologic diagnosis. Um, she then underwent a repeat open biopsy which was consistent with the high-grade osteosarcoma. And at that point, she, her care was transferred um, to us. Uh, she had staging, um, which showed really only this one focus of metastatic disease, or, or sorry, no metastatic disease. And so um, really, like we talked about for osteosarcoma, the treatment paradigm would then be neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by an in-block resection of the tumor. So from the uh, limb, uh, data for osteosarcoma, it's getting an oncologically appropriate um, resection is, is really the key to, to these types of tumors, though um, for a, a long time uh, it was thought to be basically impossible in, um, uh, when you're dealing with these types of tumors in the spine because of the um, at-risk neurologic um, tissues in that area. And so when you talk about an in-block resection, um, you have a wide kind of traditional in block resection with a s one centimeter um, margins or uh, major relevant barriers like fascia uh, versus a marginal resection where you're in the marginal area of the tumor um, or there's just a thin barrier like the periosteum. Um, and finally, if, the, um, if it comes back as an intralesional um, resection, that's any time the capsule is violated in any way, and, and what will, that's not really an oncologically appropriate, not an enking, uh, or an enking inappropriate uh, resection. And so um, Boriani and his group from Italy have kind of described seven different types of M block resections with um, three uh, or six subtypes within the type two and type threes, so 11 total types of ways that you can sort of get a spine tumor out in one large piece with margins 
Um, this is from his publication in 2018, where he kind of goes through every, so an anterior only approach, posterior only approach with three separate subtypes, and then every different possible iteration you could think of, with the key to be where you're making cuts, you're staying out of the tumor capsule at all times, you're able to reach over to sacrifice contralateral nerve roots as necessary with different approaches, and then pull out the tumor in a single um, piece. And so why do we kind of talk about doing multiple different approaches, relatively morbid, certainly neurologically more high-risk surgeries? I think the best available data on this for osteosarcoma is this uh, publication from the AOSpine Knowledge uh, Forum um, that uh, came out, it included 58 patients with osteosarcoma, um, and there's uh, about 15 um, centers included in this study, and it was a 25-year retrospective cohort to get those 58 patients. So to get better data than this would certainly be, be difficult. Um, 29 of them were anking appropriate, and 26 were inappropriate, meaning some violation of the capsule was done during the surgery. And at final follow-up, there was a statistically significant improvement in local, uh, lower rates of local recurrence and um, slightly better survival in those groups. Um, there's certainly, this is the best available data, but there's certainly limitations to everything um, in terms of when we're talking about rare diseases. Um, the groups were not exactly equivalent. The inappropriate groups had a higher rate of redo operations. Um, their treatments weren't exactly equivalent. Um, there was a lot, there was a certainly a, a large amount of loss to follow up within the cohort time period. And there wasn't all, any mention within uh, the original paper in terms of, uh, because the study enrolled from the 1980s, so uh, when the patient had their surgery, because that, there's certainly been advances within chemotherapy and radiation therapy over the past several decades. So, um, in this case, um, her tumor, though it is large and it um, is uh, into the canal, certainly a candidate for a marginal and block resection. Um, and the hope was with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, this would even shrink down some more um, and possibly be able to do a type uh, 2C type and block resection. Um, but unfortunately, um, the real world being what it is sometimes, um, she underwent chemotherapy with the um, standard in um, methotrexate, doxy, and CDP um, regime. And in fact, her tumor continued to grow through chemotherapy and was not responding. And she had several complications uh, related um, to the chemotherapy, um, uncontrolled uh, thoracic pain, eventually ended up being admitted and was placed on a ketamine PCA, could not control her, her pain related to the tumor in any other fashion. We discussed second line um, chemotherapy agents, which she um, uh, declined. And at this point, really, she no longer falls into the, the classic kind of in block um, resection with neurologic preservation type um, category. Certainly could be attempted, but be extremely high risk. Um, and we discussed with her uh, those possibilities and eventually decided um, to do um, a, a surgery in which we had a planned transection of the capsule in order to remove the tumor in uh, two pieces with a Tomita um, type uh, resection where um, the posterior aspect of the, the tumor was completely resected and then cut through the pedicles. We can see here is the the majority of the chest wall component of the tumor with the ribs out laterally. And then here is the, um, the lamina, the inner surface of the lamina, the tumor that it had invaded in, and then the cut pedicle on the contralateral side um, outside of the tumor uh, capsule, though there is clearly a violation where we cut um, through the pedicle on the ipsilateral side. Um, and uh, what we found was that clearly um, her tumor did not respond to chemotherapy. She had uh, only 30% necrosis and typically you want about 90% um, preoperatively from your neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, so what can we do now? Um, so the goal is always to get an in-block resection in these types of tumors, but there are certainly um, 
new and kind of evolving techniques to, as in terms of salvage, though osteosarcoma is a radio-resistant tumor, um, there, um, with proton beam and radio surgery, there is some data now showing local control rates um, that are relatively good for this um, uh, uh, devastating type of tumor. And so um, she is currently about a year out, doing well back in college, pain is well controlled, but, and no clear local recurrence, but we are watching her extremely closely. Um, so the key points really, primary bone tumors of the spine require a multidisciplinary team. As soon as your index of suspicion is high, I think um, going to a, uh, a medical center where there's a, a, a team of oncologists, radiation oncologists and surgeons that can all work in, in concert to kind of come up with the best plan that takes into the, um, the, uh, the patient goals and, um, and um, uh, and the goals of the uh, surgical team. And then um, in appropriate cases, an M-block resection um, for uh, specific tumors can improve outcomes. Thank you.